The planned interrogations that put the Central Park Five in jail. The Central Park Five case is a notorious criminal case that took place in 1989, involving the wrongful conviction of five teenagers for the assault and rape of a female jogger in Central Park, New York City. The case captured the nation's attention due to its racial implications, the heinous nature of the crime, and the questionable acts used during the investigation and interrogation process. The wrongful convictions and eventual exoneration of the Central Park Five shed light on systemic issues within the criminal justice system. The case unfolded on the night of April 19, 1989, when a female jogger was brutally assaulted and raped in Central Park. The attack left her in a coma and resulted in widespread public outrage. If the woman died, which she hopefully will not be dying, but if the woman died, I think they should be executed. As the investigation commenced, five young men, Raymond Santana, Kevin Richardson, Antron McRae, Youssef Salam, and Corey Wise were brought into the spotlight as potential suspects. The interrogation of the teenagers present at the place with the Central Park Five played a crucial role in the case. Each of the five teenagers was interrogated separately, and the process followed a pattern of psychological pressure, isolation, and false promises. The interrogators exploited their vulnerability, youth, and lack of understanding of their rights. The confessions obtained during these interrogations would later become critical evidence against the Central Park Five during the trial. Steve Lopez. Were you watching them while they did that? Huh? You At were watching first, them? I was watching them, but then I walked away because I didn't want to see that no more. Mm -hmm. So I walked away and I, was, and I tripped. I fell and I hit my leg. Who did you walk away with? I'm a friend Orlando. What's Orlando's last, last name? I don't know his last name. I just played basketball with him. Does he go to school with you? No, nah, he go to, um, I think he go to Career Academy. To what school? Career, Career Academy. When you walked away, Orlando walked away with you? Yeah, he helped me out because I hit my leg on something. Where did you hurt your leg? I hit it off of my front table. Yeah. I hit my leg right here. See how it's kind of swollen? Okay, why don't you... Why don't you... Why don't you stand up here and show the camera where you hurt your leg? See around here, oh, it's just rolling. You have to stay there for a second. It takes a minute to. Okay, that's good. Did you break the skin anywhere? Nah, it's just swollen. It's good. Thanks. Um, where did you stumble? Uh, like in the bushes. And did you fall down? Yeah. And I was holding my leg, and then I said, yo, you all right, man? And I said, no, man, I hit my leg or something. And he helped me up, and we was walking out the park together. Which way did you walk out of the park? Westbound. Hmm? West. We Where left on the 90, um, we left on the 96th Street side, mm -hmm. near Sand Park. Mm -hmm. Were you with this group when they found the woman jogger? No, nah, because the police had switched, they had split us up into two groups. Police split you up into two groups? Yeah. What do you mean? Because, right, back when we was on the main road, police car had came and they had sh shined his lights. So everybody, you know, everybody got scared and they, they, some ran that way, some ran this way. Okay, but your group went to the reservoir. Yeah, there was and only about group, 10 of us. Your group was chasing and stopping joggers at the reservoir. Yeah. You didn't see a woman jogger? No. You were with Kevin Richardson? Yeah. And you were with Ray Santana? Who? Raymond Santana. Yeah. And was Clarence Thomas there? Yeah. And Antron McKay? Yeah. McRae? Yeah. He had glass And you say that you left at that point? Mm, yeah, I was leaving Orlando. Do you know that there was a woman who was raped in the park that night? Uh, I found I found that out like <laughs> yes like what was it? Like Thursday around four o'clock in the morning. That's what because who told you that? Because Kevin Kevin's mother came out crying, and she he was talking she was talking to her daughter, which is Kevin's sister. He was talking to her, and he was saying she was saying that Kevin was accused of rape. Excuse me. 
Excuse me, it's noisy outside. It's hard to make sure that we get this. You said somebody came out. Yeah, Kevin's mother came out crying. So she, um, Kevin's sister had asked her, you know, what's wrong? Why are you crying? And she said Kevin was accused of rape. And, then that's, and that's how, that's yeah, how you heard I about it. it? Did you know who he was accused of raping? Nope. Do you know anything more about it now? Nope. Have the police told you that there was a woman who was raped and beaten up in the park? Yeah, they told me that when they was interviewing me. And you don't know anything about that? No. Nah. Kevin Richardson, is he a friend of yours? Yeah, he could, yeah. How long have you known him? For like, I don't really, really know him. No, I don't know him for like a couple of years. A couple of years. years? One or two years? How about um, Raymond Santana? No, I just met him last night because we was handcuffed together. Clarence Thomas? I know him because he used to go to, he goes to the school I used to go to. So that was a while ago that you met him? No, nah, not really. I don't really know him, like, because one day I was, you know, I was hanging out in the store, and he came up and he said, what's up? And I said, I do, I know you. And he was like, you don't know me all that well, but I know you, because people, people be talking about me in my old school. Okay. When was that that you had that conversation with him? A year uh, was, ago? Or? Nah, not even. It was like less than a month ago. How about Ant Anton McRae? Yeah, I know him because his pops used to manage Little League in, in Central Park. So you know him pretty well? Not pretty well. You know, I know his pops. I'll say what's up to his pops once in a while. So out of the people that I just mentioned, they're either people that are friends of yours or people yeah. that... I know you, them so-so. That you know so-so. Yeah. But not people that you have any kind of argument with or nah. you have any... Okay. Every single person says that you were with them when this woman was raped. Every single person says that. So I asked you in the beginning of the statement if you want to tell me the truth about what happened. Mm -hmm. And I want to hear the truth about what happened. But I have to ask you if these are people who are either friends of yours or who have no uh, beef with you, why is everybody saying you were there? I don't know. I don't have no arguments to you know. I get along with everybody. So they have no reason to make it up, right? I don't know. I don't know why they did it. Cause I wasn't there. They said I was physically there. That I was holding the lady down. I ain't even seen no lady. So right there they lying. And I could get like two or three. I could get like two or three people that was in the background <laughs> that I was standing with. Who would those people be who would tell us that you had nothing to do with this? Uh, my friend Orlando. Because he had helped me out. This kid named Lawrence is in the background. What's Lawrence's last name? I don't know his last name. So, I, and. But I'll tell you, if these guys were all saying you were there and you're saying you weren't there, it doesn't look so good for you. I know I mean, it doesn't. You're saying everything exactly the way everybody says, all the way up until it gets to the woman who got raped. And then suddenly you say you decided to go home. I was going home. Okay. It just seems a little funny that all of a sudden, just before this thing happens, you leave. And people who have no beef with you say that you were there. Now, I want to give you a chance to tell us exactly what happened the way other people are telling us exactly what happened so that we have on tape exactly what you say happened. I told you exactly what happened. I told you everything to my knowledge. Okay. You don't have any reason that you can tell me why your friends and people who have no beef with you would say that you were there. They're probably just getting out. They're probably they're just saying that because they, they don't want to have it no more. They don't have nothing to do with this, man. Did somebody, did somebody say that you were holding her arms down? Nah, right. My father, right, he has said um, that, that I would, you know, I participated in it. And my father asked the detective, what do you mean to, uh, that I participated in? Does it mean that I was holding her down? And I forgot what he said. And then it sounded like I, that he was trying to say that I was there and I was holding her down while they raped her. I wasn't even like that. Because I wasn't even near, I, I didn't even see no lady. Is there any reason that you can think of that all those other people would say that you were there? They're probably just trying to get out of this. No, everybody is saying that everybody was there and everybody's saying I was what, there. what they did. Nobody's I see no lady. I don't want you to misunderstand. I'm not saying that each of these guys says, oh, the only guy who did this is Steve Lopez. I know. 
You know, that's not what they're saying. Everybody's saying, we were all there, this is what I did, this is what Steve did, this is what Kevin did. So everybody's, it's not like they're putting all the blame on you. Everybody's giving a, a detailed story about what each of you did. All of them are saying you were there. I just want to give you a chance to tell us if you were there, what you did and what you didn't do, so that we can have it and get it straightened out. See, what I'm telling you, I wasn't there. Okay. So you say that just all of a sudden you just decided to go home and you stumbled as you walked yeah. and you hurt your leg. Yeah. And where'd you go then? I went, I left the park and I was going towards 97 from Columbus. Where did you say you live? So you're saying you hurt your leg so that you had to go and leave, but when you left? No, I was leaving, but as I was leaving, I fell. Yeah, and then you said you up. hurt yourself. Yeah. And Orlando was worried about you, so he said, are you okay? Yeah, you said he you hurt yourself. Up. And he, you said you had to leave. No, I didn't say I had to leave. I was leaving already, but I fell. It helped me up, and then I, you know, even though know, I, I fell and all that, I was still leaving. Oh. So I was leaving at the park. And I left the park and I was going to 97 for Columbus to look for this girl that I met on the party. Okay, what girl is that? A girl named Jessie. And where did you go when you got to 97 for Columbus? I went to um, Douglas Projects and I was walking around. So like, then I was coming back. So I took the, the, the only way that I knew because I don't really know the west side. So I came to Central Park West Wall and I was walking across the street and I was going home. And Raymond, Raymond was like, like at the corner, and I was like in the middle of the block. And Kevin and about 15 other kids was in the back near the corner. So like, it was a um, a sanitation paddy wagon and a scooter. There was there was there was you know there was going on the street. And they just made a sharp turn, and they told me and Raymond to stand up against the wall. So I stand, I stood up against the wall. And Kevin and the rest, and they ran. They got caught. When the police first talked to you, did you tell them that you had gone to the movies that night? Yeah. What did you tell them that you'd gone to see? The vice. And did you tell them that you went with a girl? No. Nah. Did you tell them you went with somebody? I told them I was talking to a girl. But the truth was you hadn't gone to the movies. Nah. What you told the police then was a lie. Yes. And you lied to them so that they'd let you go? Mm -hmm. No, nah, you know, because I didn't even want to tell them that I was in the park because then uh, I knew that was going to take me in. You thought you would get in trouble if you admitted you were in the park. Yeah. So you lied. Mm -hmm. It's four o'clock and I have uh, no further questions. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I, I do still have. What you're wearing now, you have a, a nylon jacket on. Yeah. What do you have on underneath that? Turtleneck. No turtleneck. And um, baggies. Is that what you were wearing last night? Yeah. Okay, could you please stand up and we'll take a uh, Except for picture. this, my father gave me this this morning because it was kind of okay, cold. Well, why don't you take that off then and we'll just take a picture of what you were wearing. The shoes that you're wearing, were they also the shoes that you wear that night? Yeah. I ain't go home yet. You can stand you just... a little bit over here. That's good. You just turn around once. Okay, great. Do you need anything else? No. Okay. Thank you very much. After the detective's constant coercion, Steve confesses to participating in the attack. He describes hitting the victim, but maintains that he didn't rape her. The other teenagers present at the scene maintain the same initial stance of not witnessing or partaking in any crime as reported, even though the detectives tried their best to get confessions out of everyone. Most of these teenagers gave in, citing what the detectives wanted to hear. The confessions obtained from these interrogations became the centerpiece of the prosecution's case against the Central Park Five during their trial. However, years later, new evidence emerged, including DNA evidence that did not match any of the five teenagers. This evidence, coupled with further investigation, revealed that the confessions had been coerced and that the convictions were eventually vacated. We saw how detectives can incriminate innocent people by playing mind games, which is very dangerous. Sadly, this is not the only case where law enforcement officers turned out to be wrong. 
If you want to watch more of these interrogations, please subscribe to the channel.